There's one thing that I consider to be the number one success factor in a dinner strategy, and you might be surprised to find out what it is. Stay tuned. Six years ago, I met with a nonprofit working in Omaha, Nebraska. They had done a dinner before, but had reached that plateau that many organizations reach around the three to five year mark. They weren't seeing growth in attendance and definitely not in income. The leader asked me to come in and help pump some life into his dinner. I asked him to gather his staff, board, and past and potential table host to attend what I refer to as a name storming session. He let me know that a number of those who were attending had a lot of contacts, but never shared those names with him. By the end of the time, we had 150 potential hosts, and he said that was the most significant exercise he had ever done in his years as a leader. Not surprisingly, one individual who he had the most trouble getting to host in the past had two tables and recruited five other hosts. This dinner moved from 250 to 600 plus in the next few years and from less than 50,000 to well over 200,000. That name storming exercise is indeed one of the most significant aspects of the dinner strategy and is a critical part of the initial training. There are five steps that make it a success. Many of these steps may be new to you or are different than you're used to doing. When you hit the aha moment in this video, hit the light bulb emoji and comment below what it was that most caught your attention. The steps are as follows. Step number one, gather staff, board, and potential table hosts. The most successful dinner strategy includes recruitment of table hosts. I won't take time now to outline why I believe not selling tables, but finding hosts that simply bring the most qualified donors is the best way to grow your dinner. I did a video on that topic not long ago, and you can watch that video here. Prior to gathering, you'll want to explain to staff, board, and potential hosts that you'd like them to join you for a 60-minute name storming session in person. This can be done in a home, in a private room at a restaurant, or in a public facility like a church or office where there's private space. This is best done in person because people participating virtually can get lost in the exercise, especially as you're writing down names. The best environment is where People feed off each other's ideas and names. The biggest mistake the nonprofit leaders make is that they only invite staff. This keeps the list artificially small and ultimately burns out staff who are asked to prop up the dinner year after year. Staff eventually run out of names and become discouraged. Adding board and donors, potential table hosts, into this process and cycling in new names each year broadens the base of possible table hosts. Step number two. Prepare people to bring names of potential hosts. Before arriving, let attendees know that you're wanting them to bring names of individuals who may have, number one, a heart for your cause, an understanding of your vision, a capacity to give a gift, even a significant gift, and are willing to consider an opportunity to give. Names can be found in PDAs and other personal databases. They can also be found in hard copy or electronic directories of social organizations, churches, or businesses. Step number three, set ground rules, host, and find tables. There are certain facts that name storming attendees should know once they arrive. First, we found that 50% of table hosts never fill their commitment or come through as promised. Let me repeat that. 50% of table hosts who commit to filling a table of eight or 10 never come through. They try and fail. Something comes up that distracts their ability to fill the table. Or some even say, I had no idea my company was going public. My life is so crazy right now, I'm not even certain if I'll be there. As a result, if you wanted 150 people at your event and you had tables of 10, you wouldn't need to find 15 people to commit to being hosts. You'd need 30. There are rare exceptions, but it gives you great comfort to know that if you do lose a table host that was factored into the planning. But remember, a host who only brings one or two other couples is better than a host who brings no one else. Enjoy what you have gained. Second, 
It's also a fact that three people have to be asked to host before one accepts the challenge. Therefore, to get three table hosts, you have to ask nine people. To get 30 table hosts, you have to ask 90 people. The ground rules you should establish are as follows. Anyone in the room should be considered a host themselves and should be expected to fill a table of eight or 10, depending on the capacity. Number two, any name they give of a potential host, they should agree to be the one assigned to follow up and challenge that host, unless someone else knows them better and agrees to take on the challenge of asking them. This means that ideally everyone in the room should be challenging at least five to 10 individuals to be table hosts. Step number four, record publicly but capture personally. It's a proven fact that name storming is best done in person with a group of individuals because it allows everyone to process through the name. There is no wrong or bad answer, but if someone hears a name that has a backstory, something is happening in their life that precludes them from hosting, that's important to know. Also, someone in the room may give a name, but someone else might know them better and would best challenge that person. I may have the name of someone I think may be a good host, but only know that they go to my church. Someone else may play golf with that person weekly and we'd be better to challenge them than me. In addition to listing each name publicly, you'll want to also capture the name of the potential host and the person giving the name on a Google Sheet so that can be shared with others and that the progress of asking that person to host can be tracked. Addresses and phone numbers of the potential host can be added to the system later. Before I share step number five, I wanted to share an interesting statistic that I found out the other day. More than 70% of those who watch this channel regularly have never subscribed to the channel. A radio personality once said, if you partake in the food from the refrigerator, help to restock the refrigerator. In our case, that's subscribing to this channel. There's no cost to you, but the more subscribers we have, the more this message gets out to others and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from our collective experiences. Step number five, name storm using categories. At about 75% of the necessary names, the flow starts to slow down and names get down to a trickle or stop completely. At that time, I like to add to the list a series of possible categories to prime the pump. I ask, are there any real estate agents who might be interested in our cause? Or how about car dealers, attorneys, insurance agents, doctors, or business owners? I list a series of categories one at a time and let people add those names to the list. There are some careers that require people with networking skills, insurance, real estate, car dealers, etc. Those are great people to ask to be table hosts. I'll share that list of career categories in the description below. Adding these categories will generally get the flow going again and add to the list significantly. Once the list is compiled and added to by people who were not in attendance at the name storming time, people are instructed to start asking potentials to be hosts. A script can be developed to help callers. This exercise should be done each year or at a minimum every other year, depending on how many of the hosts return each year. The goal is not to replicate table hosts, it's to multiply them. Current hosts are asked to find one single or a couple at their table and challenge them to start their own table and dive into their own pool of prospective guests. This strategy is without a doubt the number one success factor in whether a fundraising dinner succeeds or not. Try this with your next dinner and see your attendance and income soar and see your world change for the better. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which steps you like best. And if I missed anything valuable that you learned, share that with me in the comment below so that it can help our entire community get better. Let's have some fun. If you watched this video all the way to this point, please type the word host in the comment section. Once again, if you aren't already a subscriber to this channel, simply hit the big red subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. 
If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.